Hey guys, this is C after as I or Black Horse 23, and uh, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different uh, than I've been doing with the satellite rain videos. I am actually going to make a little walkthrough guide uh, for you guys uh, who are either checking in on satellite rain and trying to figure out how to play it, or are playing it and having some issues with the game or uh, don't feel like you're getting uh, the best set of uh, actions from your agents. Uh, and I'll be doing a series of, uh, I'll be doing this as a series. Uh, so uh, on this section, I'll be starting with a basic overview. So uh, let's uh, boot up the game and uh, we'll go about it from there. Okay. So we are back in, and uh, first of all, I do want to thank all the folks, both at Five Lives and the Steam uh, Satellite Rain uh, community and the forums. Uh, I uh, just posted a question about if anyone is interested about a video like this, and uh, it turned out that a lot of people were interested. And uh, big shout out to Five Lives, uh, Mike Diskey, and uh, I believe it's YDNA. Uh, for giving me a nice set of notes to start with and work on. Uh, okay, so let's just really start with the basics. When you start the game, you actually go through a little mini tutorial of sorts, uh, to, and it does a pretty good job of giving you the basic controls of the game and uh, how to go about it. But uh, what's really interesting about this game and what I have come to love a lot about it uh, while I've been playing and playtesting is the fact that there is a very, very uh, large set of amounts in which you can uh, take control of your agents and uh, keep tabs of the action. And uh, even though the keyboard setting is not 100% there yet in terms of uh, giving you control of all the buttons in the options menu, uh, it's still uh, something that I highly recommend you start with when you get the game going. I haven't played uh, the control settings on default in a very, very long time, so I, I'm not even sure if it's uh, still the same way as it is, but uh, basically you want to just go to system and uh, go to controls, and you'll have a selection over here to work with. And uh, oh, it looks like they've done a few more updates, which I'm not going to look at right away uh, because I don't want to make these videos each uh, over an hour long. But uh, what's really cool about Satellite Rain, or uh, how I would say uh, that you know that you are playing this game to its fullest, is when you're basically using a set of keystrokes uh, from your keyboard and making mouse clicks and you're not doing it and you're basically doing them uh, on the fly and you're basically doing them fairly calmly and while you are doing it what you're seeing on the screen is just a series of action and chaos uh, it really does depend on the situation so uh, you want to basically uh, have a, a spend a good amount of time looking at some of the keys, as I said, in the in the system settings to make sure that you know what's going on. And uh, what's really cool about the controls of this game is, uh, especially with the way I have it set up, is it's almost like a mix between first-person shooter or a third-person shooter type of game and real-time strategy. And the guys who uh, or the guys at Five Lives uh, with the control setting they have. Uh, they have a really cool blend of uh, uh, actions that you normally expect from a real-time strategy game like dragging uh, your mouse to control units or hot button keys but also with the way you can actually control movement uh, right now I have the WASD keys uh, over here so I can uh, move stuff around so uh, let's start with the uh, the very basics uh, of uh, this game, and you definitely want to always have uh, the most coverage of the area as you are playing, uh, so you know what's going on. So I'm moving my agents to a corner over here, 
and uh, if you've noticed the controls are not uh, or the camera is not moving anywhere uh, but there is a specific button for that and it is the letter F for follow uh, and if you hit F uh, the camera centers on your agents and when you start moving around it starts following them so you don't necessarily need to drag or use your mouse keys in order to do it uh, now on for me personally I feel like uh, this system can be perfected some more uh, where you have a little bit more control of how to do a follow lock so you can start at a corner uh, at the moment it's not something that will uh, most likely make it to the game's release but for what we have over here it's still pretty awesome and uh, actually I should do a series of uh, mixes over here so I'm having my agents uh, walk over here and there's two ways you can actually do a follow you can either hit one and you have your agent selected and press F and it starts following them or another thing that you can do is you press your agents designator number twice uh, so I'm going to click my support agent and hit two twice and it just starts snapping straight to my support agent and when I have that option double clicked it uh, basically starts following uh, as you can see uh, right now there's not a lot of chaos going on but uh, one of the other things with this game that is pretty unique or it's a uh, part of the genre in general is the fact that uh, you will have to you will have your agents uh, at times uh, sprawled out throughout the city in order to complete a series of tasks. Uh, for a, a good example here, actually, I should uh, go to Mission Control, and uh, since I'm just at this district, I'm going to, uh, oh, looks like I actually have all of my satellite beacons on this account set up. But uh, in this game, there is a series of uh, points uh, that are basically called uh, satellite relay beacons uh, and they are these little guys you see over here and uh, they basically act as your safe house and teleportation section and you can either have all of your agents teleported there at once or you can uh, just have one agent set up over there and then uh, have another agent placed somewhere else uh, and so on and just uh, for the case of this tutorial I'm actually going to spread out my agent some more uh, so uh, there's a little bit of uh, I, I guess uh, just a set of different places where I, I, I have them at so uh, I'm gonna let the game load so now my agents are basically spread out through the rest of the world and one of the great things you can do for this game uh, or uh, to have your agents spread out is the fact that uh, there may be some missions uh, where before you really get into the heat of the action uh, you may require some preparation there may be a specific person you need to find and talk to there may be uh, uh, you may need to basically start uh, having some more money uh, or just running a certain side mission or you feel pretty confident about a mission that you are going to take on and you know that you don't necessarily need all of your agents on the ground so you can have your other agents be uh, at other places of the world uh, doing other uh, work uh, while your other agents are basically about to just do a lot of actions uh, and this account, since it's early, it's giving me a little uh, tutorial over here. So, uh, and I gotta say, the guys at Five Lives have done a fairly decent job of uh, having their uh, the game's main tutorials work. And you you most likely won't ever need to go through all of this video to start being able to play the game and enjoy it. But there's some there, there's so many different types of options when it comes to this game where uh, this is where I'm uh, making these videos uh, just to give uh, show you how you can do a set of these options okay so uh, actually since I am here and I'm by the Ronin uh, so these yellow terminals are uh, basically data terminals and normally uh, when you hack them uh, 
this is, you know, how like in Bioshock you have the uh, audio logs that you find. Uh, this, these yellow terminals are a mix of that and uh, stuff that you need to find on the uh, specific, uh, specifically for the missions. And it's really cool uh, if you saw that there was a little uh, a thing pinged up on the top right corner over here, which basically takes you up to the log over. And so you have over here tutorials and uh, you have these little emails and uh, I haven't actually read this one myself and uh, uh, since the game is very much still a, a, an independent game uh, there isn't a lot of voice acting there but the writing is still very solid and if you want to know more about what's going on in this world uh, these yellow terminals are where you're going to be getting uh, your fill of the world information uh, so Let's actually uh, move to my agent over here, and as you can see, I'm just uh, snapping between my agents all around the world. Uh, actually, while I'm here, uh, let me uh, definitely uh, make a big pointer about this thing over here, uh, which is very important. Right now, this minimap is really simple, and on uh, this corner over here, it, it's your world stats. Uh, which I know the guys are going to eventually uh, make it so so it won't show the text all the time. Right now there's not a lot of text here so it doesn't matter but as you start progressing through the world you start having this world stack kind of start stacking all over the place but it basically gives you information about uh, what your strengths and weaknesses are at a certain district. Uh, but another thing that's really cool uh, about this uh, game uh, that I haven't seen in a lot of other games is the fact that you can expand your mini map and make it smaller at, or bigger and you can actually zoom in your mini map or zoom out which actually becomes pretty useful depending what you are doing or uh, specifically what you are looking for. Uh, right now uh, the, the tutorial is basically wants me to go and look for clones. Uh, which actually that would be a nice little mini tutorial or a, a basic showcase of this game. So I'm going to zoom in uh, a little bit further out and I guess I should uh, use the time to explain uh, what each little symbol here means. So red obviously uh, means bad guy or uh, armed soldier, somebody who may shoot at you, somebody who will hurt you if you start messing around. And uh, with their white uniform, uh, these guys are the hammerheads of Dracogenics, basically. They're one of the main uh, corporations in this game uh, where this, uh, the Satellite Rain storyline mainly focuses actually on these guys themselves and another company called uh, uh, the Eternals. So I have my agent selected and uh, I have the, uh, I think it's called Gridview, oh, WorldScan. Uh, where uh, it, the button for it is Y. Oh yeah, I should actually point out that uh, for special abilities, if you hover your mouse over, it's, it shows what the letters are. Uh, and uh, if you've changed this, uh, the, the symbols for it, it does show up over there. I hope the guys at Five Lives can actually make it so where I don't need to hover over the actions and just the letter is at the top right or bottom right corner of these symbols. Uh, so I have them on my mind and I can just look at it, look at the screen and know which button is what. But in this case it is uh, Y. And when you hit this, you get this uh, matrixy Neuromancer view. And there's a few things that uh, this option is very useful for. One is once it starts scanning, uh, it gives you the information about what every character in the world is. And uh, it's pretty cool and unique. Uh, since they've been adding more and more of the story elements in uh, where if you click on like a civilian if they are rich or poor it actually does give them different explanations and the way they actually have it uh, set up too which is really cool is uh, you kind of can figure out uh, if you want uh, who to really start uh, hacking for your clones which is another major feature uh, of this game and uh, I should actually do that right now so uh, at this level of level scan, uh, world scan, it gives you the text information, but if I want more information, I actually have to pay for it, which is uh, $20 or credits. Um, and so this guy's health, uh, over here, uh, you have the, basically the health stats uh, of your clone. 
So it basically, uh, how fast your uh, uh, clone can heal, how fast it'll move, and how much it'll increase your hit points. Uh, and I'll say, honestly, I pay most attention to this over here uh, when I am looking for uh, a good candidate for cloning. So I'm actually going to get out of worldview over here. And uh, as I said, with the F4 follow feature, uh, this doesn't just only apply to your agents. Uh, it also applies to NPCs. So you can click on an NPC and press F. And now uh, wherever you're, that NPC is moving, uh, the camera will start following and focusing on that person, uh, even though if you have other actions going. So I can actually have my agent move around over here, but it is still, if I'm zooming in or zooming out, it is focusing on that guy. So I'm actually trying to get my hacker clone to get here as soon as possible. And you know what, I'm, I wanna be in a little bit of a hurry, so I'll just move back to this teleporter over here and click my hacker. And now my hacker is over uh, back to, uh, or nearby where that candidate for cloning is. And uh, so uh, this is one of the coolest features of this game, I, I really think, uh, which is mind jacking, where you can hack into a character's brain and take over. And when you start, you start pretty weak and you can only really hack one person at a time. And uh, that's about it. So I have my uh, hacker who's just basically blitzing that person's brain with their, uh, uh, what do you call it, wrist, iPad or whatever. And now I've taken over uh, Mr. Henrik Kumlin over here. And uh, if you've noticed that on the screen uh, right now, I have another character who has popped up. And uh, it, when you hack more people, you actually, all of them start with the number five, which is actually, uh, I'm glad that the guys at Five Lives have done this because sometimes, uh, especially once your hacker gets more powerful, you can start hacking a full mob of civilians or a nice little squad of corporate soldiers in the world. And uh, they, uh, uh, when you hit five, you basically can select them all from around the game world uh, and they will all start moving towards one direction. But if uh, you want to select your clones of one at a time, their profiles do show up over here and on the side corner uh, over here. And uh, so you have a more selective control over here. And uh, that is, again, one of the best things with this game is uh, you. there's both like micro and macro management uh, that integrates fairly seamlessly with this game. So uh, I want to actually show a, a, a strategic thing uh, that you can do with your civilian uh, mind jack, but because this guy's stats are pretty good, uh, I'm going to actually return them for cloning, which is this little symbol over here. And now uh, this guy uh, uh, is going to basically walk to a garage where some scientist from the agency you work in will be working uh, on basically they'll harvest his genes, I guess. Uh, and I guess the fog of war is there, so we won't be able to see him go in. And as soon as you hit return for cloning, you now have uh, that person in your, in your list. So let's actually go to loadout over here. Uh, so uh, this, you will be spending a good amount of time here on a regular basis, this game, along with having the real time uh, strategy elements and uh, shooter elements it also has some uh, fairly decent rpg elements that comes with it as well uh because your agents are these cyborg clone super soldiers and the more weapons and augmentations you get the more powerful they get and uh you want to pick and choose on a regular basis what is what so let's actually go back to here so uh, these are the agents that I currently have, and it's showing their stats over here. And this is Henry Kumlin, the new guy uh, that I just hacked. And he has that nice little hair tuft over here. And when you select them, and uh, I guess I should uh, show you, uh, start, uh, uh, nope. uh, you hit the escape button. It takes you to the uh, menu. Uh, there's mission control. There's research, loadout, log, and system. Uh, this is in the loadout section, and it is under clone. And again, here's Henry Kumlin. 
you assign them, and now my soldier has a version of uh, Henrik Kumlin's genetics in there. And what you have over here is the, the little nice uh, visual changes that you can do to your character stats. So you can change your color companies, where now all of your agents have this uh, blue lining on their coats uh, instead of white, and you can actually still select your agent's uh, jackets to have a specific color. So we're going to go a little bit nice and bright here and match that guy's hair tuft. And uh, there's a, a, the headwear that comes with it. Uh, now, uh, some characters have cool hats and helmets and stuff, and uh, that's where the source comes in. And if not, that's where the default comes in. Uh, the soldier doesn't really have uh, any default headwear, so uh, his face is basically showing as is. Uh, your uh, uh, support unit has those glasses that you see that reflects the company colors. Uh, and uh, I'm going to put another green jacket on her. I'm going to also assign uh, Mr. Kumlin uh, to this clone. And now I have the option of either having them have their glasses on or off. I actually, I'm going to just leave it off. And I will also assign. Uh, the hacker has the gas mask. Uh, it basically, it's the same deal. Uh, we'll leave the gas mask on because it kind of looks cool. Um, and uh, let's go for pink. Why not? So uh, now we have that. And then we have our infiltrator. And let's also uh, have our infiltrator to Kumlin. And I gotta say, I normally like to have uh, female infiltrators just because their phenotype looks a lot nicer and they look more ninja than most guys. Kind of be a, end up being a little bit bulky and bulkier and heavier, and they just kind of look like some schlubby dude uh, who's wearing an infiltrator outfit. But uh, those are really just uh, visual preferences. And uh, if you are really uh, want to play to win this game or advance, you want to pay attention uh, to here uh, out of anything. So uh, we'll have our infiltrator also be Kumlin, and he'll be orange. OK, so now I have uh, clones everywhere. So I have everyone spread out all over the place. And uh, one of the things I can do is either teleport uh, all of the agents to the same location over here and hit fast travel all and all the agents start showing up at the same time so uh, and I have the follow feature selected so now uh, my agents are also I all in one unit well let's say that you have one agent here you have uh, uh, let's go back here again you have one agent here and uh, you have another agent here. Let's basically say that we're spread out, but and uh, you're not necessarily uh, where you want all of your agents to congregate. They're not necessarily all next to a teleportation device. So this is where you can either hit Control A, uh, and that selects all of your agents at once, uh, including people that you have mind jacked. And uh, then you uh, do a right click to where you want your agents to go, and they all start moving towards that destination. Uh, another thing you can do is hit that uh, this uh, button or this symbol you see over here. And I am playing the game with lower graphical settings so that my uh, company symbol is a little blurry. Uh, but uh, you can basically select all your agents by doing hitting that button over there. And it'll, again, select everyone. Or uh, let's say you want to have your uh, agents paired up with one another. You can hold, you can select your support agent. And if you hold the shift button and select the number three, now you have your hacker and support agents selected. And now they are paired together. And if you hit F, uh, it starts following them specifically as they move around. And uh, if you are looking for fresh clones, oh, uh, Looks like our uh, hacker agent just disappeared into an invisible hole in the wall. Uh, by the way, I should also I should have made this note a notification well before I started the video is that the game is still in early access. Uh, it is uh, in uh, still in an alpha stage. Uh, the guys at Five Lives have been making updates and changes on a, a daily basis since I've uh, started playing the game. 
and, uh, and they've been doing a fantastic job making sure things are improving, but uh, the game is still pretty massive and there are bugs that are still uh, available or that will pop around at the game world. And uh, if you are the type of person who just cannot stand bugs and wants the game to be perfect uh, the first time you start playing it, uh, then just wait a little bit. But if you are wi uh, you know, willing to have uh, just a, things get a little bit messy here and there, I could not, uh, I, basically I highly recommend this game. This game is awesome. Um, so uh, uh, one of the notes, uh, one of the members that the Steam community had put up in the early thing is uh, pay attention to early game income, uh, which is what we will do right now. So basically, uh, this green uh, terminal is an ATM machine. And your hacker can hack an ATM machine, and it basically starts siphoning a, an ATM uh, money. So every few seconds, you will be getting some money uh, every now and then. Uh, now, if you see, uh, I have over here it's saying one of my bonuses is uh, ATM siphons 150%. Uh, that is because I've already uh, hit hit up the local bank in this district uh, with my agent and soldier and have made a killing uh, with and have run off with a lot of money and have also installed a bug in the district where uh, anytime I hack into an ATM I end up getting more money. Uh, now you do want to pay close attention to how much uh, income you have especially early on in the game for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of them is the fact that uh, you want to do research on your project. And uh, over here, again, you hit research and it shows uh, weapons or uh, gear or items. I've done one mission where I have acquired uh, this laser repeater, which is an excellent uh, uh, weapon. It's not your primary weapon. It's basically when you run out of ammo, you want to have the selected or for your infiltrator, uh, if you're in a close combat situation, you want to switch to this as quickly as possible. Uh, now when you click it, I'm going to not read out the text, but basically every weapon has a story and has an explanation of what their stats are, and you can begin researching it. Now if I uh, just start researching it and let things to go at their own pace, it's going to cost me 8,777 credits or dollars. I like to call it credits because I do not know where this game takes place. Uh, so I don't know if it is America or it could be China, it could be Shanghai, and it is an apocalyptic dystopian future. So, uh, and normally in those type of futuristic settings, you normally don't have dollars, you have credits, but the sign is a dollar sign. But uh, if I leave uh, things to run as they are, the amount of research time it'll take is 16 minutes and 37 seconds. Uh, and uh, you always want to pay attention to see how much cash you got, which obviously shows up over here. And I have uh, some decent amount of money to blow. Uh, so I'm going to actually start speeding this up a little bit. And as you can see, uh, when I do that, uh, the cost of research goes up. Uh, but uh, the time it will take for this research to take place goes uh, down. Now, another thing uh, that I should actually switch to is uh, this can change based on how many researchers you have in the world of satellite rain, which is this symbol up here. And right now, I have no researchers that can help me out with my uh, mission to either liberate or completely take over this city. And uh, how we are going to be able to find researchers is with your support unit. Uh, and great, I have both my hacker and my support around, and uh, let's just turn it on. Uh, and uh, the downtown district is pretty much a slum. Uh, people are not, don't look happy, they don't have much money, and so these are homeless folk over here. Uh, so here's another guy who looks pretty down on his luck, and uh, the, exp the story uh, exposition over here is still very nice. And oh, he has actually some decent health stats, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually mind jack that person uh, while I still look around uh, with my uh, support unit for researchers. Now the researchers uh, 
are kind of generated on a semi-random basis and how you will know uh, who your researchers are uh, I will show you in just one moment but since I do have this uh, uh, world view uh, options set up I should actually point out a couple of other stuff uh, so this purple terminal that you see is uh, the power grid or the infrastructure grid that connects the, a set of cameras together and as you can see uh, this one terminal is sending uh, juice to run cameras somewhere down this way somewhere down this way somewhere down that way that way and that way. So it actually looks like a pretty uh, uh, important terminal and uh, you will want to hack those out if you want to be sneaky and you don't feel like your weapons are up to snuff to infiltrate a compound with all the guns ablazing, uh, which I highly recommend uh, you withhold on doing a full-blown Rambo uh, earlier on in the game uh, because you just do not have the firepower and your agents do not have all the gear that they will need to be able to survive a firefight proper. Um, so we've got another person set up over here. Uh, I am going to send my hacker to go ahead and mind hack this person. Uh, there we go. This actually pops. This is perfect. So let's see. Uh, this does not actually look like it is a researcher it is somebody that we need to bribe, but uh, I, as you can see, uh, when you have the world view set up and you are looking for a specific target, uh, important characters in this world view end up being uh, glowing yellow. And in this case, actually, uh, I am going to uh, figure out who this person is specifically. Uh, and you can do this when you have uh, important characters, a new tab shows up and says Mission Info. And when you click it, it will take you to the specific information this is about. And from what I can see is this is for the grid district. Uh, oh yes, in the world of satellite rain, uh, every part of the city is basically on a type of a lockdown so you can't just move from one point to the other and you have to kind of buy some type of clearance and uh, you can either buy a pass outright which is fairly expensive uh, or you can uh, do a set of missions and kind of figure out what's going on so um, uh, over here uh, for gate pass one I have to write Mr. Ragnarok cool name. Oh, uh, by the way, another really cool thing with Satellite Rain is uh, there's a lot of random generation. Uh, the city is not procedurally generated. It is the same old city, but a lot of the character sifts and items are uh, generated on random, which does yield to uh, different experiences every time you start the game anew. Uh, and it does make the uh, experience of the game different per player, which is really cool. Uh, so Mr. Ragnarok uh, basically looks like he wants to be paid. Uh, there's a little bit of history that is going on, uh, and he's worked for your agency before. So he, uh, you owe him some money, you pay, uh, you bribe him some money, and uh, once you do that, it uh, starts. Uh, basically, it moves the, the mission further down uh, in terms of what's going on. So it uh, looks like. Ah, uh, there's a little bit of a, an interesting error over here because I do know that the mission was Mr. Black before, or and uh, or maybe the main person is still Mr. Black, and I had to pay this uh, Ragnarok who Black owed. Uh, so it looks like there's a story over here. So uh, basically, now I have more information about uh, what's going on if I'm if I am to uh, purchase this pass either at a discount or just get it for free. I don't want to uh, spoil the text over here, uh, so I'll just kind of go it. But uh, if you notice that uh, where you want to know where, where you know where the mission is taking place, you click this, and uh, you start seeing a ping show up. So uh, whatever is going on uh, about this mission, there's something over here that you need to find and figure out about, and uh, that will. Uh, be what you need to look for. But since I am doing a bunch of overviews, I'm uh, just going to go ahead and uh, ignore this for now. 
and uh, keep going through the controls. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I was looking at some of the notes that the Steam uh, community members had written for me, and one of them was about research, and uh, I only have one item that is being researched right now. You can uh, research multiple items at once, uh, but if you are starting out, you really don't want to do that because it starts draining all of your funds and uh, you uh, want to make sure you have some of your funds in uh, to be able to take care of uh, something which I will actually show right now. Uh, I will use my infiltrator who doesn't have any of their stuff here uh, and I'll just go ahead and start some shit. Uh, with one of the basic security. These are the lowest level security guards you will see and uh, they are the weakest bad guys but still I have three of them and uh, I think they will take care of me pretty quickly. Alright, so my infiltrator is dead. Uh, or he is gravely wounded. I can actually send a support unit or any other unit to uh, save him before this hits zero. I don't think it's going to happen and I'm just going to actually let this person die uh, because if you notice there's this little thing that is popping up. It is basically, uh, it, the longer you wait, uh, the cheaper it will become to revive your agent, uh, but you lose more experience points when you do that. Now if you notice, because I did this action, I have uh, this little symbol that has popped up over here uh, for my infiltrator agent. Uh, every little type of task you do, it yields some experience points in the world. Uh, and now I have one skill point, sorry, uh, skill point, experience point. And uh, I'm gonna use this to have uh, one of the most important things that the infiltrator needs, uh, which is the cloak. Uh, now uh, my, uh, uh, infiltrator if I uh, so choose when I'm in a mission if I hit the C button which I have it as hind to we'll go into this nice little uh, predator Metal Gear Solid uh, type of uh, camouflage suit but if you can see that the energy is getting drained while I do that and so I have a limited amount of time when I am cloaked and uh, you get uh, better cloaking and energy as you go along However, I should actually point out one of the best tips I can give you in this game, especially while you're starting and you have your agent cloaked. Uh, that yellow energy bar also drains if you want to have your character sprint, and that is uh, pressing double click, or sorry, double right click, and your agent starts moving a lot faster, but it does drain the energy. And uh, you have to maintain kind of a cool head while you are uh, in a compound, especially with your infiltrator, uh, because uh, you want to move to a destination faster. But if you have your agent cloaked and you do that, then not only are you going to be draining your energy quickly and you won't be able to sprint as far as you think you're going to, but you're also going to lose cover. So uh, if you are cloaked, I recommend you just right click and just be patient because the chances of you being able to uh, survive at that type of event is going to be much higher than not. Okay, so I double clicked on my mind control units over here, uh, or my mind jacked, and uh, it looks like only, there we go, they're both selected now. Oh, okay. So if you double click them, uh, it just goes to one, uh, but if you hit it just once, it'll uh, have you have both show up. So, uh, even though these guys have some pretty decent stats, I am going to uh, just cap off this part of the walkthrough uh, because, as I said, I, I want to make a series of these and uh, I don't want to like just uh, have you sit through 40 minute videos at a time. Uh, and I am going to uh, show you one of the important benefits of uh, it having mind jacked units in World of Satellite Rain. I'm going to be near this compound over here. I am going to teleport all my agents over here. Uh, I gotta say you can't teleport your uh, mind jacked units 
So uh, you will have to be patient or do some planning or uh, move your agents ahead uh, at times. So, uh, so this is the Dracogenics compound. It's one of the bigger uh, enemy compounds which you'll be hitting up multiple times in uh, satellite rain. And I'm gonna actually like just uh, pull back the mini bat, uh, the mini map, just to kind of show how big it is. Um, and uh, there's different points of entry uh, in this compound, as there is uh, for a lot of the compounds in this world. And for downtown district, uh, you will be coming back here a few times, or you can actually do a few missions at the same time. Though I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. And uh, I don't know if I'll. You, You'll be able to. I'll be able to show you how in this video, uh, but I'm gonna just do that over here. Okay, so uh, don't know if actually I can get caught over here, but let's say that I uh, want to hack into the compound and open this gate, which is normally these red terminals over here, and your uh, uh, you can figure out which door is connecting to what uh, with your support unit uh, it, with their worldview. Uh, it looks like I uh, okay. I was able to hack this without any of the guards noticing, and you can walk in. But when you walk in to a compound, and as you can see uh, from the mini map, it is showing uh, red and uh, where you are. You're basically in unauthorized territory. Uh, so I'm gonna have my agent actually remain unarmed at the moment, and I want him to get caught. So there's cameras. Uh, and it looks like all right I am caught okay so uh, as you can see there's guards that are showing up oh well they're gonna just fire at me straight up no I don't want I don't want to fire I actually want to see if I can do this okay I am not armed normally let's see if this actually lets you do it or not and the AI might have been a little bit buggy, but basically, uh, as you can see, I am uh, being fired at, uh, and this is not good. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to even live through this. Uh, but uh, obviously, as you can see, oh, so my hacker got caught. So when you, if you get caught and you're not uh, in the deep, you have that pop up and normally you don't get fired at, you actually can kind of just have your hands up and uh, survive. Uh, but so uh, as you can see, uh, I'm being fired at, things are not looking good. Uh, the mission has more or less been compromised and I could have used some more planning. Uh, but uh, we'll be taking a different approach this time around, which is with our Mindjack unit. So now we have these uh, guys all over the place. And uh, oh, actually, since uh, the lead programmer, uh, Mike Disky mentioned, if you hold the control button, uh, you see that red marker shows up. You can start actually firing anywhere in the world by right clicking, and it just starts firing specifically at that location. Uh, I don't know if my Mindjack will have enough uh, health to do it, but basically I'm trying to cause some chaos, the cops are showing up, and uh, there you guys are going after the wrong guy. So my uh, agent is dead, or my mind jacked is dead, so what I wanted to show you, I, I was not able to pull it off unfortunately in this round, so I'm just gonna just go ahead and start shooting and and wrecking these guys and since I am near the teleportation uh, I will be able to survive pretty well actually let me hold it if you hold the alt button you can perform an execution kill uh, if they let me but if uh, you're uh, if you have somebody who's facing the other way and they're not looking at you, you can perform an execution kill uh, and it takes care of those guys pretty quickly. Um, but uh, since we're basically uh, in a pretty bad situation, we're just gonna, just gonna go ahead and run for my life 
And, uh, ooh, I think I can fast travel them all here. OK. So since uh, that situation turned out to be uh, pretty messy and uh, unsuccessful attempt, uh, we're going to try again. We have our agents coming by. And uh, ooh, I have an, a nice amount of uh, civilians around here. So I'm going to be able to uh, mind jack a few of them. And uh, I should actually also uh, let you know that if uh, you are out and you're mind jacking people, do pay attention for guards because uh, mind jacking is a crime. And if you're caught, you can either get arrested or start uh, getting shot at. Uh, especially if you're trying to mind jack a soldier and then there's another soldier around. Okay, so uh, it looks like I can only just mind jack one person this time around. I think it might have higher stats. Um, so let's. Uh, all right, so we have the wyverns and they're coming about over here, and I'm just going to pull out the gun. And I'm not going to actually fire. This time I'm just going to uh, arrest the guy. Have the guy could get arrested. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't shoot at him. All right, that was a little control mess. But uh, that person was fired at. And uh, basically what, what I'm trying to uh, demonstrate over here quite unsuccessfully is you can use your mind jack to cause a distraction. So you have soldiers starting to rush towards somewhere completely different in the map. And it will clear the way for you to actually do infiltration on another basis, uh, which uh, just in this case, it just does not look like I can, I'm doing a good job at that. Um, so it's all good. Uh, I will have my agent sneak in over here. OK, so I've walked in over here, but I have been caught. But it looks like only one person's been caught. No, two people have been caught. But uh, basically, this is what happens over here. Uh, but uh, just for the case of this game, uh, or for now, I am going to actually log out, uh, just because I think I've shown enough of the basics for what is going on and how to do the base, uh, just move around and what the basic buttons are. And in the next video, I will get into uh, more uh, deeper features of the game uh, and uh, try to do uh, videos per unit and what their specific yeah. stats are. And uh, just keep uh, making these and uh, hopefully you guys will be able to uh, play this game to its fullest. Uh, thank you for watching so far. Uh, once again, this is Siad Rizar, Black Horse 23. And uh, I'll catch you guys later.